Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for my 37th November 2022. I'm going to start off today's video with this preview of tomorrow's under 21s game against Colchester United, which is at the Den. It is a 1 15 kickoff for some reason. I don't know why it's a 15 kickoff. Um, kind of weird. Why not 1 o'clock? But uh, it is what it is. Maybe it's something to do with. Uh, Someone important wanting to see the game and not being able to get there until uh one fifteen, but who knows? So the match which takes place at the den will see the Lions look to gain back to back wins after Kevin Nugent's side returned to winning ways against Cardiff City last week. Goals from Tom Lahi, Nanabo, Tangina, Adam Maliki and Abdul Abdul Malik helped Mill Breeze past the Welsh side in a five nil comprehensive win. The exciting Abdul Malik picked up his eleventh goal. In just 12 games with Lee, he also a threat leading the line. Adam Maliki and George Walker will be looking to prolong their sterling form at fullbacks. Uh, the Lions are enjoying a thrilling campaign, scoring 34 goals, the most in the league, and will certainly be full of confidence against the U's. Nugent's side have not lost at home this season, picking up 13 points from a possible 15 while scoring four or more on four separate occasions. Indeed, well, Colchester United under 21s. Now, two games that Mill have lost, uh, they've lost against uh, teams that put in first team players. Now, I don't think that's a worry with Colchester United, because Colchester United are currently bottom of League 2. So they could probably put in their first team players, and that might be an advantage for us. But, uh, so, uh, yes, as it says here, Mill will with a game in hand, currently sitting in second place. Four points adrift on league leaders Bristol City, as well as building six point gap between themselves and Reading in third. Colchester will also uh, um, also head to SC16 in high spirits though, despite only a single victory in their last six league games. It came last week as they beat Watford 6-0. That was at Watford, I believe. So they went to Watford and beat them 6-0 now, and that is no surprise. Uh, I went to the Watford game, Watford Millwall, under 20 runs game at Kings Langley FC, and uh, before kickoff, I... Um, was walking past seemingly one of the dressing rooms and the Watford team were in there having a, a disco so you can see um, how much they care about their profession um, very unprofessional to do that and uh, we beat them quite handily as well uh, I think they're rock bottom and they're uh, they're suffering uh, they had massive cuts and uh, players leaving after they got relegated from the premiership so that is what that is. Does that mean cultures are any good? We don't know. Well, we'll find out tomorrow if you get down the den at 115, uh, kick off £5 entry fee and £2.50 for a car parking as well, which is a charity donation uh, to the Lions Food Hub. So there you go. Tuesday the 8th, 1.15pm kick off. And let's go. Talking of young Millwall players, here we have the Millwall Loan Watch. Which is quite light this week, but very uh, interesting nonetheless. This is from SuffolkNews.co.uk. Mill Lone Watch defender helps down Europa League finalists. Alex Mitchell was the only Lions lonely to feature over the weekend. Mill's Alex Mitchell helped St. Johnstone pick up an incredible 2 1 victory at home to beat Europa League finalist Rangers, Glasgow Rangers, on Sunday afternoon. Uh, I believe that was on television, I'm not too sure. Uh, it may be because they were in Europe and it, it was just out, I'm not too sure. Uh, but I think it was on Sky. Uh, if it's, if you want to see the highlights of that game, go to BBC iPlayer, look for a program called Sports Scene, and it is the 6th six, uh, six of the 11th 20, uh, 2022 program, that one. And you'll see it on there, it's the first game up. Uh, the Saints came into the match on the back of consecutive wins against Hibernian and Kilmarnock, while Giovanni Van Bronck suffered a humiliating 3-1 defeat at home to Ajax in the Champions League in midweek. As a result, it wasn't a huge surprise to see St. Johnson take a two-goal lead shortly after the hour mark thanks to strikes from James Brown and Nicky Clark. Uh, yes, indeed. Now, if you haven't seen it, James Brown, former Millwall youngster himself, making a career up in Scotland. And, uh, wow, what a strike. Um, he absolutely levered it. From about 22 yards out. Um, what a rocket. Uh, I, I suggest you go on to iPlayer and, and watch just for that. 
Uh, James Tavernier scored in the 74th minute half the deficit. But it wasn't enough to prevent the host from taking all three points at McDermott Park. Mitchell was, however, the only meal alone in action this weekend. Ryan Sanford's and Maystone United weren't in action due to their elimination from the FA, uh, FA Cup. Yes, it was a uh, FA Cup first round uh, this weekend. So any uh, non-league clubs uh, won in that, probably uh, not involved uh, due to their, their opponents being involved. And Joe Wright wasn't involved in Bath City's 2-1 win against Tunbridge Angels due to a shoulder injury, indeed. Uh, no prognosis on when he's out for. Uh, he's still on loan there, so they haven't called him back. Uh, it is a season-long loan, so you imagine that it's, they're, they're expecting him to come back uh, before the end of the season. So it doesn't seem to be that bad because they haven't sent him back. Maybe they can't send him back. Uh, well, I doubt, doubt they're, they're paying a lot of money for his wages in a non-league team, but uh, you never know. Um, so yeah, I think he's missed like three or four games with a shoulder injury now, um, which is a shame. He's been doing pretty well there, but uh, it is what it is. You can't play if you're injured, can you? Uh, Chinockley wasn't named in Talk United squad for their 2-2 draw at home uh, to Derby County AFA Cup, with the defender now set to return to the den following the end of his loan spell at the National League Cup. Yeah, uh, he's been missing from I think the next the last two or three games. Um, it is what it is. That, that's how it goes sometimes, isn't it? They had some, Torquay had some very, very bad uh, injuries to their players and they were literally down to the bare bones. They had like 12 players, uh, 12 fit players to choose from. So that's why they uh, probably loaned Chinockley. So there you go. Uh, that is the loan watch. Now let's have a look at quickly to see, uh, this is the whosquad.com. For the uh, St. Johnson 2 Rangers 1 game the other day. Uh, obviously man of the match. James Brown with 8.24. Because he got that amazing goal. Uh, but we are interested in Alex Mitchell. Alex Mitchell rated 7th best uh, St. Johnson player. 6.84 rating. Uh, which is not bad. Um, he had 25 touches of the ball. And uh, if we look at his defensive numbers. Uh, if it will load, yep, it's loaded. Uh, here we are. So he had three tackles and zero interceptions, but eight clearances, which is nearly as many as Andrew Considine, who is a 35 year old um, uh, stalwart for St. Johnson. And Alex Mitchell had one block shot, so that's quite impressive. And if we look on uh, passing ability. So he only had nine passes. Didn't have a lot to do. He was mostly closing down and blocking, and um, it was quite a hairy, scary game because I think quite like us, it was it was like the the Millwall whole game. Um, St Johnson had like four shots, four or five shots on Rangers' goal, and Rangers had about thirty. And they didn't score, so it's quite similar to, to us and the whole at the weekend where we had so many shots and um, didn't end up scoring. But uh, yeah, so mostly defending and he still gets a 6.84. So fantastic there from Alex Mitchell. Now, with our uh, troubles in defence at the moment, with Hutchison out um, and uh, Mario Wallace out, Cresswell getting a bang in, a bang in the face. Um, could we see Alex Mitchell back sooner rather than later? He is on the season long loan there, but I believe there is a, a recall clause in January. Could he come back? Is that a possibility? Um, you never know. You never know. It did happen to um, uh, Danny McNamara. He got called back early, which is a shame because they were they were going to St. Johnson were going to two cup finals, which I believe they won. And it's a shame Danny Danny couldn't stay out there and get the the two cup winners medals, but. It is what it is, and he came back and he helped us uh, out, and he's uh, been a mainstay in the team ever since. So um, we shall see what happens with uh, Alex Mitchell with great interest. Now, um, at the weekend, obviously the game against Hull before the game was the Remembrance Day um, rituals and celebration and remembrance, of course. So here you have uh, three members uh, of the Air Force, the Navy, and the Army. 
and we're going to see um, some pictures from the day there. Um, so you, you might know their familiar face for many Millwall fans. Uh, Poppy collection from uh, Mel, uh, Bingham Atmore. Uh, we haven't, I haven't really seen any totals yet so far about how much money they raise. I think they might be waiting uh, for the match worn shirts to be sold. Obviously, that's in two weeks' time. Uh, the cutoff date is, I believe, Saturday the 19th. Uh, if you go to matchwornshirt.com and look for the Millwall shirts, and you'll see them there. And we'll, we'll uh, await with great interest uh, whose shirt gets who. Maybe you get uh, a Bradshaw's bloody shirt or. Um, or even Charlie Cresswell's, where he got the smack in the face. See, so you can say that sh you can buy that shirt, put it on your wall. See that? Sh see that shirt, sh shirt there? That's from the game where Charlie Cresswell got kicked in the face. Um, so here we go. I'm going to cycle through these pictures and have a quick look. Uh, there's one of the dressing room. There you go. Obviously, very rainy day, so that was quite unfortunate. But it, we carried on; they carried on, and did what they needed to do. It's um, you can't plan for the weather. Obviously, um, I believe these are Falkland veterans because um, Husky have a box, and they donated some of their tickets or maybe all of them to um, people who were then invited someone from the Falkland Islands government and some Falkland uh, Island uh, conflict uh, survivalists um, I believe that's what that is and there's someone with uh, many many badges HM submarines. There's obviously the playing the last post on, on the bugle. And there are the players doing their pit as well. And there we go. There are the photos from from um from the Remembrance Day uh um events at the Den. So also at the Den. Um oh no, before we get to that, here is Scott Malone. So this is from a MillFC.co.uk. Mill Quintet. Quintet. Tackle on November for charity now in November, every November. Started off many years ago now. I'm surprised it's still going, but it is. And there's uh, men growing moustaches for charity. And uh, here is Scott Malone looking absolutely fucking handsome. Does he not? With what I believe is called a Van Dyke. I'm not too sure. It's the moustache and the soul patch combo. Although maybe the Van Dyke is the chinny chinny and the moustache, I'm not too sure. But yeah, he looks absolutely uh, charismatic. He uh, could be starring in a Wild West film there. It's part of the uh, uh, Union Army there. Absolutely incredible moustache there. And we've only just begun, we're eight days in. Uh, so you may have noticed some funky facial wear on show recently. Uh, Mill will play Sean Hutchinson, Scott Malone, Danny McNamara, George Honeyman, and Mason Bennett are currently tackling November a, mov a movement in a predominant month of the year, which uh, sees grown men grow moustaches in aid of charity. The quintet are no different as they attempt to grow a mo and raise money for the Movember con conservations Conversations Program, and they want you to help. Uh, find out more, view images of their progress, and donate by visiting their pro, uh, fundraising page here. Oh, so they've set up their own fundraising fundraising page together. Okay. Um, okay. Um, let's pull it out. So this is their page here. Is it? 
so I'm hoping to get five grand. Okay. Oh, here we go. Um. Oh dear, Danny Mac. Wow, what has happened there? Um. Hmm. Okay. Bit of bum flap on his on his lip there. Oh my God! Look at Scott. He's twirling it up at the end. He's twirling it up. He looks absolutely amazing. Well, does it, Scott McLean, doesn't he? And uh, Mason Bennett there opting to go for the goatee. And uh, yeah, interesting uh, moustaches on view there. But I think Scott Malone is currently in the lead. If it is a competition, looking absolutely stunning. And Danny McNamara got a lot, got a lot of ground to make up there, Danny. Um, so there you go. Uh, this is UKMovember.com. And I guess you just search for Mill Football Club, and and there it is. Um, now, new stadium tour dates on sale at uh, the Den. This is from millfc.co.uk. A new batch of stadium tour dates are on sale now. Step into Mill history. Explore the magic within. Walk the path many lines of legends have taken. And feel the passion in SE16 on our uh, one-hour guided tour. Uh, the Den is one of the most iconic football stadiums in England, making it the perfect place to learn all about the colourful history and heritage of Mill Football Club. Uh, the guided tour will start in the executive lounge before stopping off at various different locations in the stadium, such as the director's box, the press area, and the pool diggings media suite. The tour is rounded off by taking the players' walk from the dressing room through the tunnel and out to the dugout. The experience cannot end but you, uh, without making sure you grab a picture next to Garrett's seat. But please do not sniff it. Thank you very much. And keep off the grass. Uh, more exciting tours have been announced. Why not tour SE16? With Paul Moody on Friday the 18th of November. Why not indeed? That's in 10 days time. Uh, Pre-match tours at the Den are back just as the matches end. Um, it's on Saturday the 10th of December to see what goes on behind the scenes on the match day. Um, and here are the dates that they've got lined up. Friday the 18th is a Paul Moody Legends tour. That's slightly more expensive than your normal tour. Um, there's one on Sunday. Why is it on Sunday? Because they have... That's the day they've got Mill Sunday lunch with Santa Claus. Yes, 4th of December. Santa's very busy. Not just on Christmas Eve. On the 4th of December, he's going to be at the Den on that Mill Sunday lunch. On Saturday the 10th of December, match day. Uh, I believe that's the first game back. Yeah, that is the first home game back. Um, that's the next home game, actually. Unless, now, um, obviously we've got We've got the Bromby game. It's on the 26th of November. That is a friendly. We then have the week after we go to Sunderland. Um, but before then, we may have, or we may not, uh, FA Youth Cup uh, third round game, which has to be held at the stadium. If we are drawn at home, uh, that will have to be played at the Den, I do believe, unless... You have to get special permission, but you have to fill your form in at the start of the season to do that. So, I don't know. Millwall genuinely don't do that. They hold the games at the Den. So, there may be an FA Youth Cup game at the Den before that uh, Saturday the 10th of December game, which is our first uh, competitive game back. Um, and then on Sunday the 18th of December, we have, um, again on Sunday, why? Because that is the day of Millwall's Christmas afternoon tea. And then there's one the day after on Monday the 19th. That's the junior Christmas tour. That's a junior one, I think, because that must be the week when the kids must be off on holiday then, on Monday, I guess. So they're doing a good tour. And I, I imagine that would be a pretty decent Christmas present. I believe it's quite cheap, £10 or so, there or thereabouts. Um, and then there's what they, they've got a couple in the new year now, Friday the 13th. Ooh, no, 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 Friday the 13th. Uh, that's at 11 a.m. and then Thursday the 26th of January. So there you go. And uh, click there. So here's oh, here's the prices here. Uh, junior tours are priced at £10, have £5,116. Yeah, the Legends tours, 22 quid for adults and then less than that for the rest. Um... If you're season tick holder, you get two pound discount, but not your junior. Or oh, that doesn't apply for junior tours because they're already reasonably priced. And what do you expect? Um, so there you go. If you want to do it for free, just jump over the wall 
but uh, you've probably got to outrun the security, so good luck with that. Might as well just pay it, pay your money, and uh, have a decent time. So there you go, new new stadium tour dates on sale now. Now moving on to talking about Gary Rowett. Gary Rowett, to eleventh longest serving boss after Southampton sack Hassan Hootall. This is from the London News Online UK, the South London Press's online website. Mills Gary Rowett is now the eleventh longest serving manager in the world's top four divisions after Southampton sacked Ralph Hassan Hootall today. The Saints parted company with the Austrian after their four one home defeat to Newcastle United on Sunday. Hassan Uttal was the ninth longest serving boss in England's top four divisions. He was appointed by the Premier League club in December 2018. Rowett recently surpassed the three year Marcus Lyons boss. The only championship manager to be in situ for longer is Mark Robbins at Coventry City, who is not far off six years at the helm. So Gary Rowett is number two. He's the second longest serving manager in the championship, uh, which speaks uh, a lot about the championship. Uh, so that means, what does that mean? That must mean the other. So if he's 11th, minus 2. Um, the other 9 managers must all be in the Premier League then, no? No. That's, no, it doesn't work like that. Um, yeah, ignore that, sorry. Uh, Southampton have been granted position, permission to speak to Luton's Nathan Jones about the vacancy. Jones, 49, cut his coaching teeth in Charlton Athletics Academy before making the move to Brighton in July 2013 to become assistant head coach. The Saints will be allowed to open talks with Jones after Town's uh, championship fixture at Stoke City, another of the clubs he had a short spell managing. So. That's interesting. So I guess that's what next week. So they're making him wait until next week, and he's only just going to speak to them. Oh, so that means definitely leaving, or what's happening there? Now, why do I bring this up? Well, they mentioned Gary Rowett here. It's not really a story I get about Gary Rowett. It's a story about Nathan Jones and Southampton and Ralph Asenwood. But could it become a story about Gary Rowett? What do I mean? Luton Town. Nathan Jones leaves Luton Town. Luton Town are going to need a new manager. Will they come knocking for Gary Rowett? Would he go? Now Luton Town is only 90 minutes drive away from Derby. And it's literally a single journey down a single road, namely the M1. Luton Town are a similar club to us in terms of budget budget in this league, punching above their weight. I believe they're above us in the table currently, and they were last season as well. Um, could they see Gary Rat's um, style of pragmatic um, setting the team up as a way of them actually uh, securing that place in the playoffs that they're so desperate to seek? Maybe, maybe not. Because if if not, who else are they going to get? Are they going to get foreign managers coming there? Will they even get Gary out? Will Gary out want to go? Maybe not. But if Luton, if Southampton pay a wedge for Nathan to Lut um to Luton for Nathan Jones, and then Luton come to Millwall with that wedge, say here's a fuck ton of money. Can we speak to Gary out? Um, will will they accept it? Will the board accept it? Will Gary out say, oh, "I want to fucking speak to them"? Um, even if I tell them to fuck off, I want to speak to them. Um, and then he'll speak to them. I doubt they can. Will they be able to offer him more money? Probably not. Will they be able to offer him the same money in a shorter commute? Currently, he's he's dossing in a flat in Canary Wharf. Uh, away from his family, although he's flat sharing, I believe, with his son and maybe his daughter's joined them now because she's, um, I believe, doing uni down here now. Um, 
But, uh, like I said, a 90 minute journey down the M1 for a job in the same division um, with a team that's performing currently better than Millwall. Now you could say, well, uh, maybe that's the, re that's the reason why we're not performing as well as Luton is because of Gary Rat. Uh, you could say that. Um, you could make that point. But that's not very clear that that's the reason. Maybe I'm pretty sure Gary Rowett doesn't doesn't believe that. Um, now, in terms of, uh, I think, in terms of similarities between Luton, obviously, we've definitely got better ground than them. I don't know about a training ground. Um, in terms of future prospects, we're probably better placed than them. But um, I'm sure the fans of Luton are probably not as uh, moan. Maybe they're not as moany as the Millwall fans. And Garrett's got a lot of stick um, for the way the team plays, the results, etc., etc. So maybe he's. Uh, you know, like this story says, he's up to 11th, 11th the longest serving boss in professional football leagues in England. How long is he going to stay? He's been here three years. How long is he going to stay? How much higher in that list is he going to get? Uh, he's got to go sometime. Um, he's been linked with other jobs further up north before. Uh, the trouble is he's been to most of the teams in, in, in and around the Midlands, so where's he going to go? Um, why not? It's, you would imagine Luton, Midlands-ish, South Midlands. Why not? He's already been to Derby, Luton. Uh, no, he's been to Derby, Stoke, um, Birmingham, Burton. The only other team, I doubt Nottingham will won't, won't touch him for large goal. Like, well, obviously not now. They're in the Premier League, but if they got relegated because of his links to Derby. Uh, there's what Lincoln and who else is there? Luton. Luton are at the level he's at. Championship manager. He's very much not going to get a job in the Premier League. Yeah. Um. So if he wants to get in the Premier League, he's got to get a team promoted. And then once he does that, then he might be um how he does it in the Premier League when he's got that team promoted, very much. Uh, will open possibly other avenues to him with other Premier League teams. But uh, like I said, this really isn't a Gary Rout story. I don't think Richard, Richard Corley Ray, I don't think he's trying to suggest what I'm suggesting, but um, he is, it's in, um, it's on the Millwall pages on, on London News Online. A story about the Luton manager being tapped, uh, being possibly leaving for Southampton. So I'm putting two and two together and making six. So, but we will see. We will see. Um, would you be happy with that? I think a lot of uh, fans would. They don't like the negativity. Uh, even though we've changed this formation, new formation now, it's starting to to wobble a bit. We haven't scored in the last three games and. Uh, Definitely, if you're a fan who goes to at least every home game, if you've got a season to go, or if you, definitely if you're a fan who goes to every away game as well, every home game, you're probably definitely not happy with our away performances. And you probably put that on Gary Rowett and the start of coaching. But we shall see. Uh, on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.